na a pot blood type ito po. Woo! Alam ko na blood type ito. Pa! Uh, Anong blood type mo? Blood type B ako, anak. Oo, blood type B. Ma, ikaw, anong blood type mo? Blood type A. Blood type A? B? A? <laughs> Hello kiddos, Sir ESC here and today we're going to discuss about non-Mendelian inheritance focusing on multiple allelism. In the previous video, we learned about incomplete dominance and co-dominance. And again, today, we will focus on multiple allelism. What is multiple allelism? Before we dive in into this concept, let us describe first what is an allele. When we say allele, it is a gene that controls a specific trait. Let's say, for example, the fur is black or the hair is black. So there's an allele for the black hair. Or if there's a white hair, then there's an allele for the white hair. It controls a specific trait. So what? And that is an allele. So what do we mean by multiple allelism? Actually, scientists discovered that certain traits or some traits were controlled by more than two alleles. And so if you got three or more alleles controlling a specific trait, therefore, it is under multiple allelism. And the best example of multiple allelism is our blood type. Human blood types, we all know that human have four basic blood types. Blood type A, B, AB, and O. But the alleles involved are blood type A, B, and O. So we got three alleles in here. So therefore, it is an example of multiple allelism. Just a reminder, blood type A and B are both dominant and they have equal dominance. Actually, this is a case of co-dominance when they combine together. That's why we are forming AB, while type O is a recessive trait. Once more, A and B are dominant and O is a recessive trait. Let's be familiar more with our blood types. Blood type A has two genotypes. It could be homozygous or heterozygous. For homozygous, it is composed of two dominant A allele, while in heterozygous, it is composed of a dominant A allele and O, which is represented by small letter I. Blood type B is the same with blood type A. It has homozygous genotype and heterozygous genotype. The third blood type is blood type AB. And it is represented by this. So it is composed of a dominant A and a dominant 
B. So again, in this case, this is an example of codominance. Then lastly, blood type O, which is represented by two small letter I. Remember, it is represented by small letter I because O is a recessive trait. Let us apply this concept by answering this problem. If a woman heterozygous for blood type B marries a man with heterozygous for blood type A, what are the possible blood types of their children? Mm, this is so interesting, right? Let us try to analyze them. This symbol is for women or woman. So since it is heterozygous blood type B, we represent it this way. Then the male is a heterozygous blood type A. And so we got that. Let's use the Punnett square in analyzing the given. We know that the female during the segregation would have this. And then the male would have this. Then we do the cross-section. Followed by. Then third. And lastly. And this is our result. Let us try to analyze this table. For easy analysis, we will number this table from left to right. This time, let us identify their phenotypes. Number one is blood type AB. Number two is tama, blood type B. Number three, tama dead, blood type A. At number four, blood type O. Therefore, having these phenotypes, let us determine the phenotypic ratio. So, meron tayong iba't ibang blood types na nakuha. Therefore, our ratio would be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. Or, all of them are equivalent to 25%. So, what does this mean? Every time na magdi-decide ang couple na to na magkaroon ng baby, there's always a 25% probability or chance na ang blood type ng kanilang anak ay maging AB. B, A, or O. Laging equal chances yung bawat blood type. At take note din, maaaring magkaroon sila ng set, maaaring magkaroon sila ng set na iba-ibang blood type. Let's say for example, apat ang naging anak nila. Pwedeng lahat ng ito ay iba-iba ang blood type. That's possible. Again, the 25% in here is a probability or Chance. Kaya naman, kung ang isang parent mo ay blood type A at ang isa naman ay blood type B at ikaw ay O, that's actually possible if both of them are heterozygous blood type A and B in nature or by nature. So, wag kakabahan na isa kang ampon because it's actually a possible blood type in this case. Wag ka nang umiyak. May probability hindi ka ampon. Congratulations! <laughs> Let's have the second problem. A blood type O man marries a woman with blood type AB. What are the possible blood types of their children? So again, we got a man with blood type O, so we represent it this way. Then a woman with blood type AB. Let's use again the Punnett square. For the woman, we got AB. Then for the man, we got O. Let's do the crossing. The third one, and the fourth one. So this is our result. Let us analyze these results. 
Let's number the table. And this time, let us analyze or identify their phenotypes. Number one is blood type A. Number two is another blood type A. Number three is blood type B. And number four is blood type B. So, meron tayong dalawang A at dalawang B. So, let us determine the phenotypic ratio. We got 2 is to 2. Therefore, in percentage, 50-50. What does it mean? Every time na magde-decide ang couple na to na magkaroon ng baby, there is always a 50% chance that they would have a baby having a blood type of A and 50% chance of having a baby with blood type B. So therefore, it's 50-50 chance. And it's your turn. You have to answer the practice drill 1 and 2. Take note, this practice drill will be posted in the comment section para naman mabalikan mo at masagutan. Huwag kakalimutan na i-apply ko anong natutunan sa teach vlog na to. And that's it. We are through with our discussion. Maraming salamat sa panonood at nawa ay may natutunan ka. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you again in my next video. Bye-bye and God bless. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>